topic for today which is called as power control map so uh, what is a map protocol so map protocol is uh, full form is medium access and control uh, in one area so there is a channel channel means there is air it is assigned to some kind of bandwidth w and there are many sender node there are many receiver node uh, they are uh, producing some kind of channel among them channel is the path for routing and data transmission has to happen in such a scenario how can the power or uh, power for transmission or power for uh, channel selection all these things can be used but with least amount of power okay so why power control is required why energy constraint is required because if we are controlling the power in the network in that case the battery power usage for any node is reducing you have to understand that what is the necessity of power control map if you are able to control the power by using map protocol that means for transmission reception for channel selection node selection link selection uh, every uh, sensor node or sender node is using less amount of power if the sender node is using less amount of power means the battery whichever is there the battery usage becomes less the battery usage becomes less means uh, the same node can be used for longer period of time it happens the same thing in case of mobile phone so you have charged your mobile phone up to 100% and after that you are using it uh, in a very controlled manner so after charging the mobile phone uh, to 100% if you are using your mobile phone very judiciously that means with a lot of understanding with a lot of control at the time the same 100% charge maybe uh, your mobile will be on for two days but are just after charging it to 100% you start watching lot of videos you start watching accessing lot of internet and these and that unnecessarily okay in that case the same charge you will lose within 6 hours so this is uh, the difference between uh, power controlling so if you are controlling the power uh, the same amount of charge uh, the node can work or function for a longer time so we want always the node to work as long as possible because if node is functioning as long as possible means we are controlling the battery as long as possible node will be functioning as long as possible uh, in that case a network will be up for a uh, very long time okay so by controlling the power in every node we are actually increasing the up time of the whole network so this is the main agenda so there are many issues there are many protocols for power controlling uh, one is explained here uh, that is called as basic basic uh, this basic uh, there is a full form for basic okay so the basic protocol first we will explain that is mainly used for controlling the transmission reception power in medium access control protocol under medium access control protocol and there is some drawback in basic protocol and that drawback actually is overcome by pcm so power control math in short is called as pcm so in this last topic that is power control mac uh, we are actually understanding how to control or how to reserve or how to reduce the unnecessarily wastage of power inside a, a wireless ad hoc node and by reducing the power we are increasing the uh, node lifetime by increasing the load, node lifetime we are increasing the network lifetime okay so same network with same sen sensor nodes can be used for a longer period of time so first what is basic we will see and then we will see what is the drawback of basic so i uh, would like to uh, tell you that just give some more concentration because this is not difficult but small things are there you have to understand okay so pcm is not immediately we are starting actually we are starting basic protocol uh, but let us have an introduction of pcm so pcm is power control map it allows the nodes to vary their transmission power to different levels on per packet basis this is the first line and very confusing line that means whenever you are transmitting data you are using less power whenever you are transmitting or node is transmitting uh, rts it is using little more power whenever the node is transmitting the carrier at that time node is using uh, still higher power so different types of signals that is per packet so depending on the packet the packet type actually the node is controlling its power so data transmission is used with least amount of power because the node does not want its data to go for a longer distance so whenever 
data packet is being transmitted no transmission power is controlled to less that means the data cannot go for a longer distance whenever rts is being transmitted by the node at that time node is using little bit higher power that means rts can go for a longer distance whenever the carrier is being sent for carrier sensing at that time till higher power is being used so carrier sensing uses highest power little bit less power is used for rts transmission and least power is used for data transmission so these three things you have to remember i'll show it by diagram okay so data transmission is one type of power transmission least power rts is little more power carrier is highest power so actually this is what is called as basic protocol that is per packet uh, type transmission is there okay so pcm allows nodes to vary their transmission power levels on per packet basis it follows the basic protocol as given below what is basic protocol so it is rts cts so previously just now we have seen mcsma in mcsma there is no rts cts in csma there is carrier sensing that is trss is sensed over the channel if trss is less than sensing threshold node understands the channel is free node will transmit after lifs period if trss is more than uh, this thing so trss is less that means channel is free trss is more channel is not free so when channel is free sender node transmit when channel is not free sender node holds itself for back of time here uh, in case of pcm the condition is different here the transmission reception pair so this is kind of a like maca in this case between sender and receiver rts cts handshake is done to decide the transmission power for subsequent data and acknowledge packet transmission so this is basic scheme in basic scheme rts is transmitted so now i am starting the actual protocol rts is transmitted towards receiver with maximum transmission power pmax so this is the first thing rts signal is sent first so one transmitter and receiver they are trying to form a couple they are trying to form a pair for data transmission in maca we have seen first rts is transmitted then cts comes back from the receiver to the transmission then data is transmitted and maca w we have sent acknowledgement signal comes afterward so rts cts data acknowledgement this is the uh, these are the four signals which are exchanged in basic protocol we are using that frame so rts cts handshake is used to decide the transmission power for data and acknowledgement packet transmission so in basic scheme rts is transmitted by the transmitter by a transmitter transmission power of pmax so from sender pmax power is transmitted for rts packet when that rts packet goes to the receiver the receiver sends a power in the signal which signal rts signal and it is actually sensed as pr so transmitted was pmax maximum power but received power is pr and always pr is less than pmax so pmax minus pr power is lost in the air in the channel okay so rts was sent by pmax rts is received by the receiver as pr and pmax minus pr is actually lost in the channel and that also is understood by the receiver that how much power is lost in the channel actually power loss is directly proportional to the channel attenuation more amount of inhibition more amount of resistance or attenuation is provided by the channel more will be the power loss in the channel okay so while sending the power from the transmitter to the receiver the transmitter tells receiver that this much is the power i am transmitting but whenever the same packet is received at the receiver it is transmit it is receiving the power as pr so receiver knows pmax was transmitted receiver understands pr is received so how much is the channel loss it is pmax minus pr from this pmax and pr so now this is the most important line in basic protocol the receiver now estimates the receiver just andaz lagata hai receiver now estimates that minimum how much power would be required so still now that rts cts signal exchange is going on data transmission is not happening because in basic rts is first sent with pmax power it is received with pr from this pmax and pr uh, the receiver estimates how much would be the power required by the transmitter if it wants to send the data from transmitter to the receiver so this is the most important line the receiver after receiving pr now estimates minimum power required for data packet transmission from transmitter to the receiver 
and the receiver understands that this power would be p desired so there are three powers i am estimating i'm telling first one is uh, p max this is the rts transmitted power maximum power second is pr it is the received power of rts signal at the receiver side from p max and pr receiver calculates receiver estimates how much may be the power required to transmit data from transmission transmitter to the receiver so this is just a calculated thing and this power is estimated by the receiver as p desired what is done with this p desired value this p desired actually depends on three things one is how much is pr how much is px a p max and how much is noise level at the receiver so more is the noise level level at the receiver pr value will be least so more is the channel attenuation pr value will be less that means more will be the uh, power loss in the channel so p desired value depends on three factors so this is a question asked as a short question uh, what are the levels or what are the things that actually decides how much is p desired so p desired is calculated by receiver p desired depends on three things pr p max and noise level at the receiver or channel attenuation now receiver includes very important line receiver includes this p desired information in cts packet so initially rts was transmitted by p max rts is received by pr after receiving pr p desired is calculated by the receiver and this p desired estimated value information is embedded in the cts packet by the receiver and then sends to the transmitter so cts packet is doing two things here cts packet first tells the transmitter that yes now you can start transmission this is one thing cts packet does in case of basic algorithm another important thing cts packet is doing that is cts packet is carrying the p desired information that means how much would be the uh, power required for data transmission from the sender to the receiver this is calculated by the receiver and this thing is sent to the receiver through the cts packet by the transmitter a very important line this last black lines receiver includes this p desired information it is cts packet and sends to the transmitter transmitter data packet is now sent by the transmitter to the receiver when uh, with pre specified p desired level so these three are very important so i'll summarize first uh, rts is sent with maximum power p max pr is the receiver uh, received power for rts signal from p max and pr p desired is calculated p desired is a amount of power which receiver estimates for data transmission after p desired is calculated now the in, inside the cts packet the receiver embeds this information that this much is the minimum power required p desired for transmission of data from transmitter to the receiver and with that p desired information cts is sent from the receiver to the transmitter transmitter receives the cts packet it understands that yes now the channel is free for transmission now transmitter knows it can transmit the signal data and with how much power with p desired power so with p desired power the uh, transmitter then transmits the data to the receiver let us see uh, what is the calculation for p desired so p desired is equal to p max by pr so p max is the rts power transmitted maximum power pr is the so p max is the maximum power pr is the received power so p max by pr will always be greater than 1 because p max is maximum and pr is reduced c is a network constant okay for every network there is a certain constant so it's having a lot of other parameters but this is a constant what is meant by rx threshold so rx threshold is somewhat like that sensing threshold what you have seen in case of the previous m csma algorithm so what is rx threshold rx threshold is a constant so for any receiver node rx threshold is a constant this is a minimum necessary received signal strength to be received at the receiver so if i am saying that uh, for any signal reception minimum signal i want at the receiver end is 10 milliwatt so this is actually rx threshold so whatever signal is transmitted uh, there is a lo lot of loss when the signal passes through the air and by the time it comes to the receiver actually uh, re uh, at that at the time when it is coming to the receiver the transmitted signal it was transmitted as 50 milliwatt but when it receives to the receiver uh, it comes to 7 milliwatt let's say 
And what is the RX threshold? RX threshold is 10 milliwatt. This is a constant which is decided at the receiver side. So as reset signal 7 milliwatt is less than the RX threshold, uh, receiver would not receive it. A receiver will not be able to extract any information from RX threshold. So RX threshold is a constant, which is the minimum energy received signal strength to be received at the receiver. So to extract data from the received signal, the receiver wants minimum RX threshold uh, watt. So unit of the power is watt. So receiver requires minimum RX threshold watt power in the received signal. So I gave the example that 15 milliwatt was transmitted, RX threshold is 10 milliwatt, but when that 50 milliwatt signal comes at the receiver, it becomes 7 milliwatt, which is less than the RX threshold. What receiver understands that received signal is less than RX threshold. So receiver would say that the signal power level is very less. I cannot extract data from it. So whatever is the received signal strength that should be greater than RX threshold, then only receiver starts the decoding process. So RX threshold is a constant at the receiver side, receiver node. This is the minimum necessary energy received or power received at the uh, signal strength which is received at the receiver. C is a network constant and receiver uh, decides P desired for both RTS and CTS signal. Now basic protocol assumes, so still now we are doing basic, we have not entered PCM because PCM is a uh, purified version of basic. So first we have to understand what is basic protocol for power control. So basic protocol assumes two things. First, noise at nodes below a predefined threshold level. So every sender node, every receiver node, they are uh, in a situation that there is a lot of noise signal around it. So whatever is the receiver noise, uh, it should be somewhat less. It should be less than a predefined level. So for transmission, maybe it is decided initially that receiver noise cannot be more than 2 milliwatt. Okay. So that value uh, has to be as less as possible. This is first assumption in case of basic protocol. Second assumption in case of basic protocol is from the transmitter to the receiver, from a receiver to the transmitter in both directions, the channel attenuation is same. Okay, so it's, it sometimes happens that transmitter to the receiver attenuation is less and receiver to the transmission attenuation is more. Okay, attenuation offered by channel, attenuation offered by the medium. Okay, but basic protocol assumes that the same channel attenuation in both directions, that is from the sender to the receiver and from the uh, receiver to the sender. So these are the assumptions of basic protocol. So this also can be asked as a short question. And which are the basic assumptions for basic protocol. So first assumption is noise level at the receiver should be less than a decided threshold, predefined threshold. And second is a forward uh, and backward, that is transmitter to the receiver and receiver to the transmitter. In both directions, channel attenuation is same. Now, why are we doing basic protocol? Basic protocol is mainly uh, used, so I have not explained the protocol yet. Uh, basic protocol is mainly used to uh, control the power in the MAC, okay? So whatever uh, MAC layer, uh, data transmission and all these things are happening, for that, uh, the power control is there. Why power control? Power control helps to save sender node battery power. So whatever is the transmitter is there, receiver is there, everywhere, power actually is saved. Saving node power increases the sensor node life because more uh, is the saved power, higher will be the uh, bat battery lifetime, higher will be the node lifetime. And what if node lifetime is more? So node life, uh, if more, in that case, it increases the lifetime of the ad hoc uh, network so that it may be used longer. Okay, so all these things we are doing, PCM and other thing, basic, we are trying to increase the uh, lifetime of the node. In that case, the network lifetime will be increased. In that case, the same network we should be use, uh, we should be able to use for higher uh, time period. That means for higher amount of time, for higher number of days, that same network can be used for sensing some parameter in the area where it is deployed. For higher amount of time, that it, data exchange can uh, occur between the sender node and receiver node. Okay, so for increasing the network lifetime, we are actually using power control map.
And first of that is basic basic protocol. What is doing first? RI RTS is transmitted with Pmax power. RTX is received with PR power. Then we are calculating what is P desired. So receiver is sending back the P desired estimated power signal thing to the transmitter side. Transmitter is transmitting data with P desired power. How is P desired calculated? Pmax by PR. Into Rx threshold, which is a constant. C also is a constant. Now let us see the diagram. This diagram you might have to draw in the exam. So I told you that a basic is a, a per packet flow basis of uh, uh, protocol. That means depending on the packet, it actually the node actually uh, controls the power. So here uh, A is a sender node. Okay, and here there will be a B receiver node. That diagram also I will tell you uh, later on. So this is a transmitter thing. This A is supposed to send uh, different packets. Okay, so what are packets the transmitter node sends? It sends RTS. It sends data upon receiving CTS. It sends the carrier signal. So whatever is the biggest circle you are finding, this within this circle position of A node or presence of A node can be sensed by carrier sensing. So what is this X node? X node can sense presence of A node by sensing the carrier of uh, node A. Okay. So whatever is the carrier frequency of A, that is transmitted in omnidirectional. That means every direction. So even if a node here, even if there is a node here, they will be able to sense the position or presence of A node exactly at the center at this position. So uh, let us now see what are different types of Transmission and transmission power. This is the smallest circle. So for data transmission, least amount of power is used because data is a very secret thing. Uh, more power using you are using or uh, sender node A is using for data transmission. That means data will go for a longer distance. That means data can be accessed by anybody. Okay, but node does not want that. A wants that the data can be received only by a chosen few receiver nodes. Because A will be coupling with chosen uh, node B. Okay, that's why the transmission of data is within the smallest circle with the radius of D. Okay, so transmission range for data. This is the least power. So that was explained in the basic. So basic used per packet data control. Okay, so whenever data is being transmitted by a sender node, least power is used by the sender node. Next, there is RTS. So just check. This is another circle which is called as dashed circle. This dashed circle is little bigger than the data circle. So what data circle? The receiver placed anywhere within the yellow place. The receiver can uh, sense the data transmitted by A. And for RTS signal sending, that means whenever uh, the sender node A is sending the RTS signal, it is in a little bigger region. Okay. So data circle is little smaller. RTS circle is little bigger, and RTS circle is having a radius of small m, and we can see that m is greater than d. That means RTS transmission power is little greater than data transmission power. What is this green circle? This green circle is called as carrier sensing zone for RTS. So whenever RTS is sensed inside RTS, there is an indication of node A ID. So all the sensors. So this distance is k. Okay, that means this whole radius from this very dot 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 circle up to the center. So this whole radius becomes m plus k, which is written here. So this outermost green circle is having radius of m plus k. So within m plus k, anywhere there is another node, it can sense or it can sense the carrier carrier frequency sent by the node A. So, what is the least power circle? Least power circle is data circle. What is medium power circle? Medium power circle is RTS circle. That means RTS signal is sent with little more power than data. And what is the carrier sensing circle? The carrier sensing circle is green circle. So, carrier sensing is done for a widest range. RTS sensing is done for a medium range, and data sensing is done by a smallest range. That's why it is written that. Data radius is less than RTS radius is less than carrier sensing radius. So there are three different signals. First one is data signal sent for a lowest uh, area that is yellow. Then RTS signal sent for a little bigger area than data 
which is given by this little pinkish kind of a circle dashed circle which is having radius m and carrier sensing is done with a huge amount of a uh, area which is given by the total green circle which is having radius of m plus k this is happening at the transmitter side okay. so the uh, previous slide uh, the another node x was here it is within the n plus k radius so this x can sense what is happening at a or x can sense that there is a sender node at a but can x sense the rts x cannot sense the rts because x is outside the pink circle outside the small m radius circle can x sense the data sent by a answer is no because this x is outside the data circle so what x can sense only is that there is a sender node a and it is actually transmitting but what all packets the a is transmitting that is rts data cannot be sensed by x so x is kind of a exposed node which just senses that a is transmitting but x cannot sense what exactly a is transmitting in that case x feels that a is free and x also will start transmit because x cannot have any notification about data x cannot have any notification about rts so as x is not receiving rts x does not know that a is trying to transmit a data to b okay so a b suppose b is somewhere here it's a receiver a b is trying to form a couple that x does not know so what x does is x just feels that it's free to transmit and x will transmit data for some other receiver which is somewhere else and that transmission and a transmission will get collided and a transmission will be disturbed by this exposed node x so this is the problem in basic algorithm i'll just repeat again that a is transmitting data up to d a is transmitting rts up to m and a carrier that is over the frequency over which a is transmitting data that carrier reaches for a longer distance okay that actually within the sensing range of a so x senses the presence of a x senses that a might be having some carrier frequency but x does not know that it is transmitting data for receiver b or it is transmitting rts for receiver b so x though it can sense that a is present but x thinks that a is not transmitting anything because in basic for data transmission and rts transmission less power is used in that case x feels like it can transmit anything x feels that it is free in that case if x transmits data then transmission of x and transmission of a gets collided and both this transmission are hampered are disturbed this is the problem with uh, basic protocol same thing we would see from uh, so same thing is explained here okay so just see packet transmission in basic scheme the same thing node x can sense rts so net node x is here another node sent by transmitting node a x is within pmax zone of carrier sensing so pmax is actually this one so pmax power is used to transmit m plus k distance okay but as power in data transmission is less till radius d that a is transmitting data only up to radius d node x will not get the sense of data transmission by node a so x understands that uh, a might be sending uh, carrier a might be sending rts but x does not know that if a is sending the data because per packet transmission is basic protocol hence x does not know data has been transmitted over d so x would think a is not transmitting any data in this case x behave like a free exposed node and x also would start transmitting data for some other receiver finally data packet of x will not collide with data packets from node a and transmission of both x and a will get hampered same thing happens in case of receiver so whatever is data in case of a transmitter same thing is acknowledgement in case of receiver so just see what is b b is a receiver it is transmitting acknowledgement signal for the lowest circle of d radius so whatever was data there here it is acknowledgement b is transmitting cts over a radius of small m so whatever was rts there here it is cts and what is cts carrying cts carrying the p desired signal level and finally uh, whatever is the cts sensing zone that is actually having radius of k plus m okay. 
so whenever the receiver is transmitting at that time it is transmitting acknowledgement signal after receiving data okay so b receives data from a and then b sends the acknowledgement signal back okay with a uh, radius a that means least power is for acknowledgement signal second b sends cts for a little bit bigger region which is given by this pink dashed line it is for radius m and whatever cts carrier is being sent by b that reaches for m plus k distance so this y understands that b is trying to send the cts but it is not very sure whether b has sent acknowledgement or not okay because acknowledgement radius is very small so y only understands that b is sending cts but after that whether b is uh, sending the acknowledgement that acknowledgement does not receive to y so what y understand is this can transmit uh, to b or y thinks that it can transmit to any direction and that transmission and b transmission will collide that is a problem of basic protocol so here also this d which is for ack transmission this is least m which is for cts transmission which is medium and m plus k which is the carrier for cts transmission this is highest so p max power is used for transmission of carrier plus cts so cts goes up till this and carrier signal goes up to m plus k radius okay and here also we are finding the same thing that node y can sense cts carrier sent by the receiver b within p max zone or carrier sensing zone so p max zone is the biggest circle okay the so biggest dotted uh, pink circle this is uh, m plus k radius this is actually the cts carrier sensing zone this is highest okay. but as power in ack transmission is less which is given by d radius but as power in ack transmission is less till radius d node y will not get any sense of ack transmission by node b okay so node a is somewhere here a and b they have formed a couple and a sends rts signal to b b wants to send cts signal back after that a sends data to b and b sends acknowledgement back so that acknowledgement transmission uh, does not reach y that data transmission does not reach y okay that cts transmission does not reach y so what y node thinks that cts is not there y node thinks that nothing is happening uh, at y node okay at b node so y would think that b is not transmitting anything like acknowledgement so what happens y now uh, feels like a free exposed node and why would start transmitting an acknowledgement packet of node b will not collide with data packets from node y and b transmission and y transmission both will get hampered this is actually the drawback of basic scheme at the receiver side now in next slide what i have done is i have shown both the processes together so in exam you might have to draw this kind of diagram and both processes i have shown together that is node x sense so here just see that all these black circles are receiver side all the pink circles sorry black circles are for the transmitter side and pink circles are for receiver side so node x can sense rts and node y can sense cts okay so i have mixed actually the previous two diagram because rts and cts power is max so a is sending p max rts it is sensed by x b is sending p max uh, cts uh, carrier that is also sensed by y but Uh, the data is transmitted over this d and acknowledgement is transmitted over this d so y does not get to sense acknowledgement x does not get to sense uh, data hence x and y would transmit as free exposed nodes x and y would think that no transmission is taking place between a and b so a basic protocol is asked you have to draw this diagram only one diagram and you have to explain so data packet of a will collide now with x transmission an acknowledged packet of b will collide now with y transmission because this x is not having any clue that data is being transmitted because data is limited only up to d uh, distance okay if x knows that is yes, data is being transmitted so if we are increasing this d up to uh, m plus k then only x will understand that yes a is transmitting something like data okay so that is the improvement which is done in pcm so difference between basic and pcm is in basic we are transmitting data up to d but in pcm periodically we will transmit data up to m plus uh, sorry k plus 
uh, n plus k. Okay, so that will be the uh, distance of uh, data transmission in case of ECM. We will see that. Okay, so data packet of A will collide with X transmission, and acknowledgement packet of B will collide with Y transmission packet. All transmissions lost. This is actually the drawback of basic protocol. Now, what is power control map? So, very fast, I'll try to finish off. Power control map modifies the drawbacks of basic scheme and reduces the probability of collision. So, here is the source A and B. Both transmit RTS and CTS with Pmax. The initial stage, RTS is transmitted with Pmax. CTS is also transmitted with Pmax. Now, here, very important thing, the crunch line is given here. To avoid the collision between data from A and transmission of X, the A transmit data with Pmax power periodically. This is very important line. So previously A was transmitting data with uh, B uh, radius. Now A will transmit data with Pmax. Okay. So previously A was transmitting uh, data over this distance. Okay. P desired level. P desired is less than Pmax. Now in the next case A will transmit data with Pmax periodically and not every time. Thus, periodically, the exposed node X senses that data from A and X delays its transmission. The receiver also periodically sends acknowledgement P max power. So what is done in the PCM is this data transmission range is being extended from B up to N plus uh, K. Okay, so N plus K is the overall range. So periodically, A is transmitting data over N plus K compared to A is transmitting data over D in basic. So this is what is said to avoid collision of data from A to transmitter X, A transmits data with P power periodically, not every time, and thus periodically the exposed node X senses data from the A and hence X delays its transmission. Receiver also periodically sends ACK with P max power. The duration of each high power data transmission by A transmitter is long enough than the time required for the carrier sensing. So data from A is periodically sent with Pmax power. Previously, data was being sent by P desired power. Here, in case of PCM, data from A is periodically sent with Pmax power and Pmax is greater than uh, P desired. For EIFS, which is a longer period, we will see what is EIFS. It is called extended interframe uh, space. Okay, for EIFS period, the power level of data is lowered back to P desired, and for uh, another time, so it is like this so RTS first, and then CTS, and then this higher. So this is the P desired power. Previously, in case of basic, all the power has been transmitted with P desired. So this was the level. So this is check that this is Pmax for RTS transmission, Pmax for CTS transmission. And then data was being transmitted with P desired. So previous case basic data was being transmitted with P desired level like this. Now in case of PCM, so this is the power transmission pattern timing diagram of PCM. In case of PCM, the power is actually transmitted over this carrier sensing time Okay, which is also called as SIFS. So you can check that this is SIFS time. So for SIFS time, uh, it is like this. Okay, and for EIFS time, the power is brought back. Okay, and for certain time, the power is Pmax. So this is that periodic time for which uh, Pmax power is transmitted for data transmission. So previous case, data was being transmitted only at lower level. Hence, X was not having any understanding of uh, the data. But in this case, in case of power control map, the power is being transmitted uh, with Pmax power for a certain time. And then it is reduced. Why not every time power is transmitted with Pmax power? Because in that case, you are, you, you are wasting a lot of uh, power if you are totally transmitting the whole uh, data with Pmax power. So transmit with Pmax power for a certain time, for SIFS time, again bring it back to IFS time. Again transmit, so this is a periodically. So sometime transmit Pmax uh, data and then transmit data with P desired. Again transmit data with Pmax, again transmit data with P desired. Again transmit data with Pmax and then data frame is over. Again next frame, so after data frame there is acknowledged frame. So first it starts with RTS, RTS is given by red, it is shown here. Okay, CTS is given by blue, then this is data frame. Okay, and in data frame, so these two diagrams are different. Uh, below, this is the overall gist, and above, it is actually what happens. 
So if you are talking about P desire for basic, only thing the difference is this and this was there, and after that power of data was only up to P desired level. So that will be the diagram of basic. Only P desired power is here. But in case of PCM, this power level is increased up to P max for certain time and brought back to P desired for EIFS. Again, increased periodically for certain time. Again, reduced back to desired level P desired. Again, increased for certain time. So this is the periodic things at which higher power is being data is being sent with highest power of P max. Same uh, structure is repeated here. So two structure of PCM we have shown. What is EIFS? EIFS is extended interframe space for which the power is lowered. What is SIFS? SIFS is the short interframe space. So this is the time between RTS and CTS. This is the last slide uh, in this uh, first module or in this lecture. So it is said that PCM transmission duration must be larger uh, than the time required for physical carrier sensing. Okay, so this data transmission time should be longer or larger than the carrier sensing process. Since the nodes in the carrier sensing zone delays their transmission for EIFS, if they are not able to decode the received signal. So this uh, EIFS should be a longer time till uh, inside which the actual power is being lowered back. The transmit power for data packet is increased to Pmax. So this last two line is very important. Transmit power for data packet is increased to Pmax just after CTS periodically and brought back down to P desired level at every AFS duration. So if you want to write about PCM in two lines, these two lines have to be written. Transmit power of uh, data is increased up to P max level just after the CTS periodically and brought back down to P desired level for EIFS duration. And again after that it is increased for X to understand that yes data transmission is taking place and it goes on. Thus PCM overcomes the drawback of basic. PCM achieves output very close to 802.11 which is Ethernet protocol while using less energy. So this finishes your uh, chapter uh, 1 or module 1. We will start with module 2. So you please come back here in 10 minutes time. We will start with module 2. Thank you.